Somebody tell him, Lord, we love you. Tell him, God, I love you. The Bible says we love him because he first loved us. We love you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We love you, Holy Spirit. We glorify you, our God. I love you, Lord. More than yesterday, I love you, Lord. More than words can say, I love you, Lord. Honey. tonight I know that you're going to do mighty things you're changing our lives and aligning our course you're clearing every ambiguity you're placing us in the place you know we belong thank you Holy Spirit because you're here in Jesus mighty name come on give him a mighty hand clap of praise I want you to turn to the neighbor on your left and the neighbor on your right and say hello to them. And for those of you who are watching us at home, of course, you're welcome to the Praise Program on Lighthouse Television. This start July 2019. It's very, 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 it's a very blessed evening. And, and we thank God for giving you and I the opportunity to be alive, to enjoy this. Of course, for those of you who are watching us on set for the first time, we want you to know that at least every month, Lighthouse in its generosity has extended its hand to make sure that we have a service uh, live and just discuss any topics that we feel God has put on our hearts to share. And again, on such evenings as this, tonight I'm glad to have a very wonderful people with us in studio. You might clap for yourselves. Praise God. And because of how much people love God, there are people also in the overflow. We love you very much and we bless God for who you are. And uh, if you are there right now watching me, I want you to tell, tell your neighbor, call somebody and tell them, let's sit right now because something wonderful is happening. And there is no better way I would have this evening uh, topped with a beauty like it is to have and host a very wonderful woman of God. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome with me, Modesta Sweeney Okwomi Lumega. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. You might say hello to our viewers before we continue. Uh, good evening, our viewers. I'm very, very happy and pleased and honored and privileged to be in this place. Thank you for listening. Praise God. And of course, we thank God for the pastors that are here. All the Fanero pastors are in the house. Our elders, our golden mothers, and everybody, we welcome you. Thank you again, choir. You can give them a mighty hand clap of praise. They've led us well, and we want to thank God also for the people behind the scenes and behind the cameras, and we... We, we, we bless God also for the leadership and management of Lighthouse Television that has made it possible 
to host people like us and many other more. And I believe one of the greatest Christian stations that we have in this nation. So you can say amen to that. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now you'll allow me to go straight to the, to the, to the topic of discussion because I, I feel many things are burning within me uh, to share many things. Uh, and today we, we want to talk about living a life of purpose. Praise God. Living a life of purpose. What does it mean to live a life of purpose? What does it mean to, to live a fulfilled life of purpose? What's the difference between a person who is living a life of purpose and somebody who is just living and existing? Praise God. And those are the things we want to discuss tonight. We want to go so deep in understanding what is purpose? How does God ordain purpose? How do I know that I'm living a life of purpose? Of purpose. What are the consequences of living a life of purpose? Praise God. And so I'll begin with you, woman of God. When we talk about living a life of purpose, what, what comes to your heart? When we talk about living a life of purpose, what comes to my heart is that the very definition of purpose. The very definition of purpose is the reason why a kind of thing is created or the reason why someone or something is created. So all of us carry reasons as to why we live and we exist. Praise God. And I'll add on that. I, I, I tend to also say that it is the power behind my actions. Because, yes, there are reasons that are both macro and micro. In the reason why we plan the plans we have, the actions we take in this life, of course, but it is that power, it is that drive behind the things that I do. Because many of our actions define our purpose. Many of our actions define the reason for our existence. Either by nat nurturing or by nature, regardless of how it comes. There's things embedded in our systems that cause us to do the things that we do, the way we do them. And consequently, those are the things that define um, our existence. There are many people. Who leave this world, live in this world, sorry, and leave this world, you know, like, like a wind. And they never had an opportunity to know why they were created. That is one of the most fundamental experiences of human existence. I believe it's the thing that holds every idea to pause. For every man to understand. The Bible says, Paul says, not that I have attained, he says, but I seek that I may apprehend that which Christ apprehended me for. What a powerful statement. He says, not that I've attained. I'm in a journey. I'm, I'm a work in progress on this. There are places in me that are not perfected in the sense of probably in his mind, he had not fully apprehended the reason why he was existing and why Christ called him and ordained him. So he says, you know, I follow after that I may apprehend that which also I'm apprehended of, of Christ. And he says, I, I count not myself to have apprehended. In other words, every other day he's discovering a deeper meaning and understanding and interpretation. And that is why he says, he forgets the things that are behind him and reach forth unto those things that are before him. In other words, he switches his vision and sight from the things that are parked to look for the things that are ahead of him. He looks at the responsibility of his future. You might not be responsible of your past, but you are responsible of your future when you understand that you are a purpose being. Praise God. That was a very sobering statement for me to think through. For, to see that even Paul the Apostle, who laid the foundation of the faith, pondered once on. And that is the thing I feel we should discuss about. And so probably I'll begin this way. What is the main reason why many of us never connect to this road to purpose? I will say one of the main reasons why we never, correct, we never connect to the road called purpose is knowledge. Um, some people just don't have a knowledge about 
anything whatsoever. What the, do you mean knowledge of anything? Because I, I know how to, <laughs> no, to, to, the, to the, go the, to the, school. I know how to eat food. What do you mean by knowledge of anything? Paul prayed for the church in the book of Ephesians 1.17. And he, he, he asked God that, that, that the, the eyes of our, understanding, of our understanding may be enlightened, that we may have a spirit of wisdom, and that we may have a spirit of knowledge in the revelation of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I feel that everything that exists, exists because even if it is this cup, this cup has a manufacturer. Mm. Everything will want to draw its life and its fulfillment from its source. So if they have not reached that place of encountering their source, it means they have not encountered a particular knowledge of their source. Therefore, they don't know themselves. That's why now uh, in the book of John, I think it's First John, uh, First John 3, it says that behold what manner of love that the Father has given unto us, that we may be called the sons of God. And then he says somewhere that, 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 that he tries to put the picture that the world will, will not know you because the world does not have a clear explanation of who God is. So if someone has not come to the understanding of who God is in his entirety, because God is the source of everything and every one of us that exists, so if I've not come to the knowledge of God, if I've not come to the knowledge of the revelation of Jesus Christ in my life, there is a high likelihood that I'm not in consonance to my purpose. And, and I get that. I, I, I agree. 100% I agree. But let's go beyond even the person who has not met God. Yes. You see? Who has not any sort of understanding mm -hmm. about his creator. And I think we begin from there. Before we even go in those who believe, the believers, we go back to the place of a man or a woman probably watching me right now or watch, who will watch this program one day in the future who has never known God. Or if some of us would go back to recollect our thought line before we knew God. Because... You, you think, for example, you go back to the mind of God in creation. You understand? The reason why the world is embracing every idea about human existence is because many a time the devil tries to delude men from the reality of truth because when men find God, they actually, in a way, find purpose. Why? Because they are revealed finally to the creator that made them. They come in contact knowledge of the one who created them. Look at Genesis in cre the creative story. He's created everything and then he now says, let us now make man in our own image and likeness. And the Bible says, and in his own image and likeness made he male and female made them. And the Bible says, remember, he's saying, let us make let them have dominion. Again, this is defining the purpose. Eh? Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. This, God is already explaining the responsibility because our purpose is in our responsibility and our, our responsibility is in our innate ability. It is not so much the things that we, 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 that are ordained for us to get on the way, but it's so much the things that we are born with that even if responsibility had not come with, with, with those things, then we would not have needed the things that we have. You understand? For example, when he says that he has given a woman a womb, he has given a woman a womb because he knows that this woman will bear a child. You understand? What's the point of a woman carrying a womb when that womb will never carry a child? So again, you see purpose there. But that purpose also comes with a price of responsibility. How do I get this child? You see? That all of these things later, sort of, when God reveals this responsibility, in there is a revelation of purpose. I know 
And I know that the God of this world, the Bible says, has blinded men from the knowledge of the truth. That's what the scripture says. Because he knows that when men finally discover, when men finally understand, when it comes to note that actually this God who created me, created me with the responsibility that it is easy for a man to find purpose. Are you following what I'm saying? But we cannot find purpose at all when the revelation of God isn't. But you see, I've also seen Christians who proclaim to be Christians, profess to be believers in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But this knowledge is not in them. So again, for me now, my question is, why isn't this knowledge in them? Why is it that I see Christians who profess Christianity, but they don't live a purpose-driven life? Um, still, I will take it back to knowledge. <laughs> why I, am I, I get what you're saying. Knowledge has degrees. Yes. Okay. Um, God desires that we not only get born again, but that we may come to the knowledge of the truth. So there are those people that are born again. Yes, they are born again. But remember, there's also people who know that they only want to get born again to escape hell. They only want to get born again to just have the satisfaction they are born men. again. <laughs> to get men. They want to get born again to get To be men. delivered from the generational curses, curses. that yeah. are frustrating yeah, yeah. their lives and taking away their man at night. Yes. Money. I mean money. Yes. Not man. Mm -hmm. But that is not... <laughs> That is not the entirety of the package called salvation. Salvation is just a primary thing that God created that we may enter into the depths, the bottomless things that the Spirit of God revealed. Who wills that all men be saved yes. and um, come yes. to the knowledge yes. of the truth. Yes. Uh -huh. So, of course, there are those ones who say they are born again and they say they are in purpose, but when you check, it's not consonance to truth because they have only gotten to that first level. They have decided that I only wanted to get born again and I'm born again in that seat. I'm going to heaven. So, they have forgotten the abundant life that Christ died to give us. They have forgotten that, that God has given us all things that pertain to this life and godliness. They have forgotten of all those things that God even invested in the inside of us as Christians, as, as, as his saints, they have forgotten all that. All they know is that I'm born again and I'm going to heaven. Whichever direction takes me, whether it is pain, sorrow, frustration, sickness, everything, it's okay. But at least when I die, I'm going to go to heaven. So, yes, I get you on that. Yes. Firstly, that God wills that all men be saved. Yes. And come, and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Yes. So God is saying, or he's telling us in scripture that you don't just, uh, God just doesn't want you saved. He just doesn't want you born again. Mm -hmm. But the comma is there. And he says, and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Yes. I'll ask you the very question. The prefect of Judea asked Jesus Christ. <laughs> Pontius Pilate asked Jesus, what is truth? And Jesus answered mm. and said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. <laughs> <laughs> truth is Jesus. Yes, you're right. The yes. truth is Jesus. The truth is the person of Christ. Yes. But let me go a bit deeper in there. Yes. You know, a man will say, even me, I have Jesus Christ. Even me, I know truth. I know the truth. You think you have a truth. I also think that I have a truth. So, yes, you're telling me Jesus is the truth because he says I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's true. But what is, what is that thing that separates your truth from mine? What is that thing that for you has made you find purpose? And for me, again, in what I define as truth, I have not found purpose because we have to be honest here. All of these things, you, have you ever been in a situation where they are quoting scriptures, but they are not working for you? Have you ever been in a situation where you can even repeat the very words the person is talking about? They even speak, uh, you know, sentences or scriptures or, and every, 
as they're speaking a scripture, you're completing it. You understand? But it's not a reality in your life. It's not a reality in your life. You understand? And that creates frustration. I'm talking about that person who says, I'm blessed, I'm highly favored, I, 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 I have been given everything that pertains to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that called me to, I, 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 all of this. But practically, when I get in the real life situation, these things are not aligned in my life. So when you ask, when you tell me truth, Jesus Christ, I have the word. There are many people, by the way, who are so confused, yet they have a lot of scripture. Do you understand what I'm saying? The, the, a man can, 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 can speak and speak and speak, and then in the middle there you see the, the deviation. But he has scriptures in his head. So again, go deeper in helping me understand what is that part of truth that finds purpose? The part of truth that finds purpose is that part of truth that is your own personal revelation. Uh, your own personal revelation of the word of God. Papa, you can have a revelation of Jesus, but that's yours. That's, that's how Christ has revealed himself to you. Another person, he will reveal himself to, 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 to them differently. So I believe people gather scriptures, people gather Many things, they gather summons, but they never get to see the entirety of, of what they have gathered because they, they do not have a particular revelation because revelation is ap apocalypsis, you taught me. That one thing. But yes, once something is unveiled and I see it, I'm transformed into that image of what I've seen. That's yes, what the Bible but you says. See, I hear you. <laughs> but you see, the challenge we have in our dispensation is... Yes. Christ is, when you say, when you say your personal revelation, yes. right, yes. of Jesus Christ, mm. there is one who thinks, there is someone who will say, okay, if you're talking of me having my own personal revelation of Jesus Christ, mm. Mm. then that is my knowledge of truth. Again, I'm telling you, I have a personal revelation of Jesus Christ. Mm. I believe. Yes. Hmm? yes. That he punishes me for, for this, for my sins. I'm just, this is his personal Revelation. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. Sometimes we so much look at defining how men see God, but then we forget that sometimes men see God the way certain men have represented him. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I'm then held into this downward spiral of a life that is going downward beyond my own control. Are you hearing me? And evidently, I lack the understanding. And that frustration is in my head. I don't know whether it's how I learned Christ or how I was taught Christ. So it's another thing if I met him my own self and had my own warped idea about this God. But it's another if I enter a dispensation where it's the status quo. It's the accepted understanding of God. It's the general thought line of a few men who have a few results. That I can actually point to and say, but if that one went for this service and this works, that means it must be able to work. And sometimes I will try the same thing and it will not work. So again, I'm asking, what is truth? Okay, I get it. Mm. <laughs> truth. Okay, I'm trying to explain truth and not go to revelation, not go to knowledge. Because Jesus defined himself as truth. And you have plainly told us that uh, anyone can have their own way in which they, they will say, I have Jesus. And if I have Jesus, then it means I have truth. And if I have truth, then it means what you're seeing out of my life is a result of what? of that truth. But Papa, that is not true. So what is true? What is true is that if someone indeed saw truth, because Paul said the very same things in the book of Ephesians 3.9, mm -hmm. why? That he was anointed that he may make men see. If I can see truth, I cannot come and reveal that truth to you, Papa, and then it's not truth. Mm -hmm. The reason as to why I could hear you and hear myself is because that is truth. Mm -hmm. 
it was not just revealed to you, but when it was revealed to you, it causes me to see a particular way. Mm -hmm. It causes me to see. It leads me to see. It opens those windows in the spirit world for me to see, those places of revelation for me to see. It opens me to the man called Jesus Christ for me to behold him. Mm -hmm. And when I behold him, of course, in the word and the way you've revealed it to us, the Bible says when you behold him in the book of uh, 2 Corinthians 3, 8, you are transformed in that very image from glory to glory. Yes, you, you, you're going where I wanted us to go. Yes. That everybody might have their own revelation of Jesus Christ. Yes. And even us as ministers of the gospel might give a certain revelation and understanding of how we understand him, regardless of whether we think we are right or wrong in mm. our own perspective. Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes. But... There is one thing that a man who has really had the true revelation of truth cannot miss. Yes. It's the life yes. of God. Yes. You can, you, can, you can miss out on anything, but the true evidence that a man has experienced God a certain way and has come to the knowledge of the truth is life. Yes. You understand? Yes. He says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. You, you cannot come to the revelation of truth and the evidence of life is not in you. Yes. There's somebody who asks themselves, so what do you mean by life? Mm -hmm. Life here is that personal experience of God that goes beyond religion. Religion. You understand? It goes beyond what men define him for you to worship to the level of their understanding of worship. He, he gives you your own worship. He gives you your own song. He draws your own wave and vibe. He establishes your own. It's like sometimes, you know, when I got to know Jesus, because that's, that's the thing. Pontius Pilate is asking truth. Who is truth? You understand? You think he's not seeing him? He is seeing him. He's before him. He asks him, what is truth? The, the one he's asking is before him. Are you hearing me? But he cannot tell what truth is. But, but scripture tells us, when he asks him what is truth, he dismisses him out of his presence and goes in the presence of men and tells him, I find no fault in this man. But we don't see a place in the middle of Jesus Christ explaining himself to Pontius Pilate that I am this person who is truth. What I sense in my spirit and the missing part that I feel I can add by, 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 by permission and not commandment, I feel that Jesus himself gave Pontus a certain vision, a certain experience. That, but all Pontus could see was he sees no fault. I wish Pontus saw more. I wish he saw that this was the salvation of Israel. I wish he saw that before him was the savior of the world. I wish he saw before him that this was the son who sets free and whoever he sets free, he is free indeed. But he received enough to answer the question of the need at the moment. And the son of God respected him enough to reveal himself to the level of the understanding that the bigger purpose of God would be fulfilled which is the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So sometimes when we say see, it's deeper than seeing. What do I see? How do I see what I see? When you say I see Jesus, what do you mean by you see Jesus? When you see him, what do you see in him? The Fenero Annual Women's Conference. Dr. Cindy Trim is a highly sought after thought leader, life strategist, best selling author, and former senator of Bermuda, enlisted among the world's top 100 doers and influencers by Ebony Magazine. Her message of empowerment resonates uniquely through various works. Dr. Trim is the author of over 40 books, including bestsellers such as Commanding Your Morning and The 40 Day Soul Fast. And now, if you are ready to strengthen your leadership capacity, gain higher spiritual truths, and learn practical strategies for a successful and victorious life, please welcome 
Dr. Cindy Trim. On the 6th of July at the Kololo Independence Grounds. It's back. It's bigger. It's better. The Fenero Annual Women's Conference. My Great Prize 2019. On the 6th of July at the Kololo Independence Grounds. Women are inspired. Built and empowered for a generational impact. There's something on your story bigger than your skin color. There's something in your blood bigger than your language. There's something in your destiny bigger than your education. There's something in your posterity bigger than your generations before. There's more to you. Come and be started and encouraged in this walk of life. It's going to be a great time with our beloved man of God, Apostle Grace Lubega, special guest Dr. Cindy Trim, and lots of great ministers. Woman in Style. Remember, it's free entry. For more information, follow our social media platforms. With great love, we are waiting for you. Fanero, make manifest. Praise God, hallelujah, you're welcome again. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. For those of you who are watching us live and those of you who have just joined in and probably you've been away and you've just probably uh, joined in on the second se segment of this show, you are on the praise program, of course, by Fenera Ministries International, uh, given us the opportunity by the generosity of Lighthouse Television we want to thank God for what he's doing and what he has done for us. And before we went into the break, we had said to discuss an idea and a mind of truth. Because we were now at a point when we are saying, yes, it's true that you have to see, so to show. Like you said, Paul said, and to whom I'm least of all saints was given unto me this grace, to preach the unsearchable riches of Christ. And he says, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. Praise God. And so, the essence of what a man has seen, he can only make men see. You cannot make men see what you have not seen. And if you cast a vision on men of what you have seen the wrong way, it means they can only take the wrong vision of him. And we had started on touching the issue of Pontius Pilate. Jesus is standing before Pontius Pilate. And Pontius Pilate is asking him, what is truth? But when you say see, Jesus is before Pontius Pilate. It reminds me of Galatians 3. He tells them, all oh, foolish Galatians. He says, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes, he says, Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth, crucified among you. It's the same idea. 
The Galatians, he's saying the testimony of their eyes has seen this. Yes. They saw the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Yes. They believed on the Lord and have testified that indeed Jesus was crucified before them. He was set forth before them as the propitiation of their sins. But before long, we see the foolish Galatians again going into now a place of walking out of the grace of God and the righteousness imputed by faith and the works by faith, and then they start seeking a place of justification through works. So we start to see that sometimes there is a fall off from the vision. We're not just talking about what you see when you receive Christ. We're talking about the consistent vision that you have about him. So that's why we, we need to go beyond just Somebody walked in my office and said, I am a believer. I've believed in God for this long, but I went through a situation and I doubted God. But they had seen him. They had seen him. But at a particular point, they doubted God. So maybe I want to go now deep into the place of how do I keep a consistent life of beholding the truth? How do I keep a consistent line and not fall off? Because some of the people you said don't know, it's not that some did not come to that knowledge, but some have not kept it. It has left them before long. Certain things have come and choked the word. Cares of this world, things have come. Some of them receive it with joy. They carry the understanding thereof. They get it. They understand it. But some, like the Bible says, the, the cares of this world comes. The pressures of this world comes. And before you know that, they walk off course. It's not new. Even Jesus complained. I mean, Paul complained once. You know, boys left him. They abandoned him for the care of this world, for the love of this world, the scripture says. So how do we keep a consistent pattern of a man continuing to behold, continue? Because he has promised right? He has promised to us that as we behold like in a mirror, as we behold like in a mirror. So it means the more we behold, the more we are translated. Sometimes it's not that people don't know truth, but it's sometimes it's just that some see a little and walk out and see something else. You understand? The God of turning away, Baal. Baal is actually the literal word of the God of turning away. And sometimes we, we don't turn away necessarily to filth. Sometimes we turn away to the things that are not permissible, that are not beneficial. Sometimes we turn away from the things that seem right but are not true. Sometimes we turn away to the things that are okay but not necessarily wrong. Sometimes we turn away to the things that are the path of least resistance, the things of the road most, tra most traveled. Sometimes it's not that really somebody has gone off so much the faith that they're no longer believers, right? But they can entertain a thought and a vision of something that is so slightly off and that little tangent once that little tangent goes off even for a few degrees eh, like an angle theta once it does just a little like that it's enough for a man to go off the course and behold another thing and start to turn into what he beholds in the name of its Christ but then it's another thing so how do I then keep on that tangent um, the Bible says in the book of First Timothy 4.15 that meditate and wholly give thyself to these things. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says that if you meditate therein and if you give yourself therein in these things, thy profiting shall appear unto all. So there has to be a place of the believer just not hearing it once on a Sunday service, but a place of meditating, taking time to meditate on the word of God and giving, thy, giving himself or herself wholly to that word that he has heard. Yeah. And, and, and I agree more on that because sometimes we, I have seen desperate men yet ignorant. I've seen it. I've seen a man who is very desperate but he's ignorant of the things of the spirit. And so he does or she does some things that really show that she's a hungry, desperate woman for God but the wrong way because she is detached from knowledge and the detachment from knowledge is as a result of a place like you and I have agreed of not continuously beholding right and 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 we get so lazy in the meditation we got so we get so lazy 
in the giving ourselves wholly. What, when somebody out there might ask, what does it mean to give yourself wholly to the word? Let me explain this. Many times people are teaching the wrong way. Like I said, there are many things that pass for right but are not true. For example, I have said this once in church and said, every action that is derived from human ability and strength and wisdom ends in disarray. Because it's not the mind of God for the human being to pave a way out into a higher light without the leading of the Holy Spirit. And we have seen people who have given themselves to forms of light because it was human effort. Anything begotten out of human effort will always contradict the promise because the promise of God comes with its doing in the fulfillment in the man. And sometimes it's in the little small things that were not privy of that they carry certain consequence deeper than many of us would, uh, would imagine. I'll give you an example. Some people say, oh, learn to do the word. If the word of God says do this, do this. If the word of God says do that, do this. If the word of God says do this, do that. Right? That's one of the most misleading statements to the Christian faith. God has not called us to do the word. God has called us to receive the word and the word works in us. He says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Did you hear that? He says, thou shall meditate therein day and night. Comma, that thou mayst observe to do. He did not say, and you should observe to do. No, he said that thou mayst observe to do according to all that is written therein. That means the word is not done. No, the word is meditated and spoken. Yes. It has its own inherent power to do. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. It has its own inherent power. We're coming back to purpose. But you see, we cannot find purpose if we can't define truth and how it comes. Are you hearing me? So, some people think that there is a, if the Bible says, uh, forgive, you forgive. No, no, no. You, your action is not in what the Bible says. Otherwise, then you have a list of commandments to obey in your own human strength. But rather, you read the word of forgiveness. That word enters in you like a seed. It's planted in your heart and then you bring forth the 60 fold of forgiveness, the 30 fold of forgiveness, the 100 fold of forgiveness according to the degree you have understood. Praise God. When a man understands the word, there is no debate of whether the word will work through the man. What a beauty. What a rest. What a comfort to simply know that I just need to get the right word in my system. Some people say, oh, but apostle, I've prayed for, for healing, and then I failed to get healed. You know what? Play someone's 24 hours and see. Just get a word and read it for 24 hours and see. He says these words are medicine to their bones. They are life to them that find them, and medicine to their bones. God is not a liar. Do you know even reading just the book of Ecclesiastes can heal your body. He said these words. Because the word of God is not limited in the meaning you're reading. No. No, 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 no. That's why it's not the words of God. It is the word of God. In its entirety, Logos is the same either from the beginning and the end. Why? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same. That means in the time space of when Genesis comes and John and Jeremiah and Nehemiah, in the time spaces to God, they came to man in series of time. So when they say Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, the word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same word that goes to blind Bartimaeus. Are you hearing me? The same word that goes on a woman with a bleeding issue. And, and, and he says, daughter, your faith has made you whole. That very word can get you a job. Somebody shout hallelujah. You can read a sermon of healing. Praise God. 
and then you, you score marks in your education. You excel because it's the word of God is not limited to the facet of your primary interpretation. It's it, it can give you different dimensions of life. It's that prism that gives the beauty of this color and picture of the good news. Praise God. So, we want to go deeper into this. You've spoken about the thing uh, of meditation. And again, like they say, meditation has the word to matter, to speak it. So, I've learned that I will read the word and then I speak it continuously until it gets a hold of me to a point where it starts to work in me. That means purpose is not something someone finds to do. That's why we said it's the power behind my actions. That means my actions are results of, of, of the power. Don't make me preach. You're supposed to also be sharing. <laughs> my results are... are actions uh, 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 my actions are a results of that power of purpose that works in me that as you've said as i continue to behold i'm changed into that very very image now let's go to the next point again on the issue now we want to draw back to the place of finding purpose and probably i'll ask this way when we what is our primary purpose as believers as Christians, as children of God, what, what is the responsibility to this right of sonship? Okay. Uh, Papa, before I answer that, I've remembered you've just said that purpose is not something that we find in, 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 in our cause of life, but it is something that backs up our actions. It took me back to Jeremiah 1.5, when God speaks to Jeremiah and he says, that even before I placed thee in your mother's womb, I knew, I knew you and I called you and I ordained you as a prophet and two nations. Mm. So that means his purpose way existed even before, before he came existence. to his physical Praise body. God. God. So that means even when he got into his physical body, he got into it with purpose. Mm, mm, mm. It was already there. Mm. He carried it along himself until when now God encounters, has an encounter with him and sheds on him what it exactly is supposed to be. The line to. of understanding yes. of what was already preordained by God. Yes, Mze. Praise God. Yes. So, now to my question again. <laughs> what is our primary responsibility of, of this, of purpose? What, what, when you say for the Christian, what is our primary responsibility in the purpose mm -hmm. that we have in Christ? Our, our primary responsibility in the purpose that we have in Christ, as to me, the way I see it, is souls. I've not known any purpose that a man has attached himself to that he's drawn from the heart of God that is not attached to his people, that is not attached to, 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 to reaching out to the souls, that is not attached to building the souls, that is not attached to giving back to the souls. Why? Because God, souls are God's primary desire and heart and mind and vision and everything. Fanero, we are what we are because of souls. Our mission is, the, the background of our mission is souls. Everything that we are doing, we are doing because of souls. So, to me, I see that any purpose that God has given a human being is hinged to souls. I agree on yes. the souls, but I have seen, I have seen movements. Yes. I've seen revival conferences. I've seen power-packed crusades. And I've seen people receive Christ. And I've seen them dwindle. And vie off quicker than they came in. You understand? So there must be a bigger picture to the end of these souls. That's what I want to hear. The, <laughs> I get you now. Oh, I quicken my understanding in Jesus' name. The bigger picture, I see the back, <laughs> the back end the reason as to why someone will start up something and then you see dwindle and dwindle and dwindle, there is an underlying thing called principles. I could start up something and not build it in the principles that must govern it. I can start up a ministry and not build it in the principles that govern it. Exactly. That's my point. 
I've gotten you. Yes. That it's, it, if, if, if you're just for the sake of souls and we're winning souls, yes. we can win them. Yes. But if these souls are not again brought to their purpose. Yes. You understand? Yes. Why is a man born again? Yes. You understand? I've seen yes. people who have received Jesus because they have demons disturbing them. Thank God they're born again and they are assured of heaven. Are you hearing me? Yes. But then they vive because, again, they did not find that full line of purpose. Yes. You see, what people don't see is how God sees human beings. If you want to see how God sees human beings, look at the account of Job. God is bored seated there doing, you know, loving on himself. Not bored, enjoying, watching. <laughs> watching a movie. Satan was the bored one. Bo Satan is bored, moving. And then God turns to him, fundamental. He says, have you considered my servant Job? You understand? That's why the Bible says that he rejoices over us with what? Can you believe sometimes God thinks about you? And he starts singing in his heart. Oh, how beautiful my son is. <laughs> how awesome is the glory upon her life. You understand what I'm saying? Now, the Bible says that God the Lord is in the midst of if he is mighty and he will save you and he will rejoice over thee with joy. He rejoices over you. Are you hearing me? He, he will rest in his love and he will joy over thee with singing. That's what I'm trying to see. God loves people so much. That even in heaven, he looks and he, he looks as, oh, <laughs> he claps his hands and says, look at Lubega Grace. Wow. <laughs> you understand? Then he gives somebody a high five about you. That's how much. That's why the Bible says that we, we were ordained to show forth the praise of his glory. Because he has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. You understand? You see, he, 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 he. That's the primary thing. Souls that we will to bring many sons to glory. That, that's the primary thing. Issue of purpose. To bring many sons to glory. Not to have a life of Christianity that is regrettable. I regret why I became born again. There's probably somebody watching me and he's saying, you know what? Ever since I became born again, I had problems after problems, trouble after trouble. Listen. That is your understanding. But God's mind for you is he died for you that you might have life and life to the fullest. See, some people say salvation and then they end there. Again, you know, if you, if you, even if you suffer and die, you understand it? As long as you have Jesus. You see, Christ is like a consolation of a failed life. But at least... He died when he was born again. No. People are supposed to say, of, of all things, not at least, no. Of all things, he died a born again believer. Because souls are not just one. For men to, you know, go through this life suffering and, you know, existing like nothing. No. To the end is that every soul that has been saved, like Paul says, we labor that we might present all men perfect in Christ. And there is nothing that defines the perfection of the person of Christ like the revelation of the glory of God on a man. God will use men. God can use men. Praise God. God has ordained men. God will ordain men. I, you know, when you see a tomb, I leave a person. When somebody goes to the doctor and they said, we did not find this. We didn't find cancer. Yet it was stage four. And then you remember for a moment that flesh and blood didn't do this. But that thing inside you, you start to learn to explore more, to, to say, God, how, how much more is this thing? He called it treasure. In nothing vessels that the what? I love the word. Excellence. He just didn't say that the power, no. He says that the excellence 
he didn't say power. I repeat. He said that the excellence of power. I don't know why people read it. That may be of God. Did you hear that? That the excellence of power may be of God. That means you have this treasure in earthen vessels that God will excellently display his power. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Now, how can you find that and not find purpose? Think about it. How can you find that and not find purpose? How can you wake up every day to display the glory of God and you're not an answer? Somebody shout hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm trying to tell you? You wake up with the excitement that I know that I know that I'm going to answer. Oh, I'm going to answer. You cannot be an answer and you worry about money. Because money answers all things. So it's supposed to be answerable to the man that gives the answer to the world. You can't, it's like I can't die tomorrow or next week or next year or in five or six years. I know or 10, I know or 20 or that. I know because when I look at the, the picture of this purpose, I've not yet finished. My Lord said it is finished. Why did he say it is finished? Because his purpose was done. Are you hearing me? Paul says I'm torn betwixt two. For those of you who are watching me and you're sick, refuse to die. He said, for I'm torn betwixt as of to be in the flesh for your sake, which is, uh, or to be with the Lord, which is far better. And he says, now I choose. This was a choice. Paul, he just said, okay, I choose to stay in the flesh, he says, because it is a far more advantageous thing for you. He had not finished. So how can cancer finish you? Praise God. How can HIV finish you? How can accidents finish you? You see how then our expectation is not cut short? How I sit in a car and know I will arrive? Somebody shout hallelujah. He has made known unto us the mystery of his will. He, he has gone to the end of that purpose with which he purposed in Christ. When, that's why I tell people, when you understand the responsibility of this glory, you realize that it is tending the man or taming the man or leading the child of God into the liberty of the spirit. Some people think purpose is to do some people think that God arrayed your life this way, that you'll have a hundred members in church. Are you hearing me? You'll drive only two cars. That's what God willed. Are you hearing me? There would not be statements like whatsoever. Somebody shout hallelujah. There would not be statements like whosoever. No, he would have removed that because when he puts such presuppositions, whatsoever, whosoever shall say, it means that he is leading you to the well, but he's not telling you how much to drink at the well. That the showing forth of his glory is to find purpose. And this mind defines the actions. But these actions you find in the liberties of the spirit. And the liberties of the spirit start to give a certain mindset to you. You start to see things differently. Why do I tell people Fanera has not yet started? Because it has not yet started. With what I see, it hasn't. Some people think it's, it's just the vision of how big Fanero God showed me. No. It's not the vision of how big Fanero would be that God showed me. No. It's the vision of the liberty in the word of God that I have seen of how unlimited immeasurable surpassing greatness of the power and why I have an anointing that is without measure. It's the word of God that has given me vision. The word of God does not show your end. The word of God reveals your unlimitedness. 
Somebody shout hallelujah. It, it doesn't just show you that you end here. No, it only opens your life to the import. He says, with God, all things are possible. That's why a man can define their eons. Their eon. The man can term time and space because he has the ultimate substance of creation in that time and space. That's the essence of faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. But this substance is not given the parameters of how far it can go. When he gets into the substance, he says that nothing is impossible to him that believes. Talk about the liberty of the spirit. We want to close. Um, the liberty of the spirit is to the extent unto which a person has chosen to believe. Mm -hmm. mm. When Jesus was trying to heal some two people, there's, there's, there's these two blind men that come to him in the book of Matthew 9. And they ask him if he could heal them. And when you go to the me message version, it says, become what you believe. He looks at them, extends his hands to them, and he says, become what you believe. The liberties of the spirit is, to the measure that I've believed I will be. Yes, yes. If I have believed, even if you wake up in the morning and see the unseeable and go into the, anti, to the galactical and supersede it and enter realms that uh, are not seen or heard everywhere, to that that you have believed, you become. And, and do you know many people are not free to this liberty? Yes. Because limitation again comes in the knowledge of how much has been given them oh, versus yes. what is supposed to be given them. But you see, one to come to this close. So then again, purpose is not I ordained you to go this far. No. It's more so much of you are a prophet. Move. As far as you want. You are an evangelist? Move as far as you want. You believe. That is why expectation is a powerful thing. He says, I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to make you prosper, not to harm you. Plans to give you that future and hope. He says, to give you that expected. Choose now and expect crazy things. He says, I'll give you your expectation. That is why we ministers who claim mastery have responsibility over how much expectation we put in the men. You can be everything I believe God for. Yes. Did you hear what I just said? You can, be as a, you can be everything I believe God for. That's why listen to everything that pushes you out of that comfort zone. The crazier the man the better you are. And even as Fanero, I tell people, don't limit yourself to anything you've seen. Even what we're doing in Uganda, Uganda has never seen. But give us another two, three years. They'll talk about us the whole world already. Oh my goodness. Somebody say, I have believed God. I have believed God. I have believed God. Come on, raise your voice and start to speak to God. Serere brakatala. Zirere kebro zolomando zoboko shakabata. Zirere kebrando robo zoboko shalalalalalaba. Zete kele brakanda zakabaka shekere bra. Zirere kebro zoloboko shatalaba ye. You are free to even go beyond the expectation of your man of God. Believe God. Father, we thank you. Mm. We thank you. Come on, if you're home, make some prayers. We thank you, Holy Spirit.
we thank you holy spirit and if you're there right now and you're watching me and as you are listening to the word of god you felt like you needed to give your life to christ you can repeat these words after me and say lord jesus i receive you in my heart as my lord and savior and i believe that you died and was raised for my glory if you've made that prayer you're born again and may you look for a bible believing church and join it or you can come and join us every thursday from 6 p.m at the logogo uma grounds for services every thursday and sundays we have two services 8 to 10 a.m and 10 to midday and if you're sick in your body right now and you're hearing me at the sound of my voice i speak healing there's somebody with a pain in your lower side of the left lung god is healing you right now there's a woman right now watching me your your neck was not able to move move it right now god is healing you in the mighty name of jesus there's somebody with a swelling it is just below your armpit god is healing you right now in the name of jesus there's somebody with an infection god is healing you right now in the name of jesus there's somebody with a hearing problem your ears are not hearing well god is healing you right now somebody with a short-sightedness god is healing you somebody you're sweating at night so profusely and you've been weak in the body god is healing you and all diseases in the name of jesus christ and may i also add as we finish the program that we have a business symposium a conference for people who are working people who are business people, career people, wherever you are, the Joseph Gene it's called. That thing that was in Joseph that governed the whole nation by the Holy Spirit. Well, they're going to be there on Friday at the Kololo grounds, that, that, but the numbers are limited. Of course, you're going to pay about 50000 for, you know, legal provision. We, we don't take any of that. It's just to facilitate. And then we, the next day, we're having a women's conference on the same Kololo grounds gates will open from 2 p.m. That one is free. We expect more than 20,000 women on that ground. The woman of God, Cindy Trim, is on flight to Uganda. She's going to come. She's going to be with us. The woman of God, Modessa, is going to be there. And many other ministers. We're going to have fun that day. We invite you to come and join us and, and, and have fun with us. Come on, somebody. Let's just thank God for this evening. Let the ruins come to life And the beauty of your name Rising up from the ashes God forever you reign And my soul will find refuge In the shadow of